Welcome back to my Road to Completion Guide for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is Episode 7. Talk to the NPC sitting on the ground around the corner. <laughs> Where did everyone... Now what do I... Ask him why he's crying and then give him the white pinwheel we picked up in a previous episode. Who's everyone? Everyone? Uh, the spinning... Only one. The pure white... What? <sighs> Sorry, I have... I just... Is this the pure white... Oh, oh, everyone, and a pinwheel. Hey! What? Could you... I don't follow. I know about those monks saying... Why do you want that? Oh, I'm sure that every... And then I'll get to... I'm in charge of look... You can do that. Now select accept right. and use divine abduction oh, to right. send him away. But also... But yes... We will continue his quest line later, but for now, drop down and use the puppeteer ninjutsu technique on the other NPC. After he raises the banner, use the homeward idol. Now we can make our way to the next boss fight. Kill the Great Serpent to unlock another trophy. Grab the Bundle Jizo statue, use the Homeward Idol, and fast travel to the Temple Grounds.
Kill both carps in the pool up ahead for extra treasure carp scales. Remember, if they disappear, just wait a few seconds for them to show up again. Grab the Holy Chapter Infested item and the prayer bead from the chest before using the Homeward Idol. Fast travel back to the hidden forest so we can fight the next mini boss. After setting up a safety save, buff with a pacifying agent and divine confetti. Now charge the mini boss and spam attacks until he disappears. When he reappears, charge him again, but this time you'll have to avoid his magic attack by running to the left or right. You can also tank the damage if you have enough health. After the first death blow, buff again and repeat this process until he dies. Killing this mini boss rewards us with the malcontents ring. Now fast travel back to the abandoned dungeon entrance. On the way to the antechamber idol, grab the following items, Yashariku sugar, treasure carp scales, and scrap iron.
Now make your way to the next mini boss. Remove the pacifying agent and shinobi firecracker. Now equip the firecracker before setting up a safety save. Removing and equipping the firecracker usually allows you to keep this position after saving. If it doesn't, then you'll have to run back to this mini boss from wherever the game loads. Position yourself behind the mini boss and use the Ico Sugar along with Divine Confetti. Move around the corner for the first death blow. Use mortal draw for quick damage and then run to the exact spot I show on screen. Two things can happen at this point. Number one, the mini boss charges you like he does me. If this happens, get the high ground and use mortal draw while he's locked in the area below. Number two, the mini boss keeps the high ground. If this happens, back up a little and use mortal draw. No matter what happens, you need to fight this enemy at a different elevation to gain the advantage. Fast travel to the upper tower antechamber idol. Set up a safety save after killing the enemy upstairs. <laughs> Drop down and deliver a death blow to the chained ogre. Position yourself in the next room where the chain ogre can't reach you and then spam mortal draw to finish him off.
grab the animantite scrap before using the homeward idol. Follow me to the next idol and grab the animantite scrap. Sneak up and kill the enemy on the left, quit the game, and set up a safety save. Now sneak up behind the mini boss for an easy death blow. To gain the advantage in phase two, simply counter his attacks with quick R1s or mortal draw. The safest time to counter is when he uses his poison thrust attack, but you can be as aggressive as you want during this fight.
Rest at the idol and make the 8th prayer necklace so we can increase our vitality to 18. Follow me so we can eavesdrop on Lady Emma and Ishin. Put it to use. To protect our still abandoned. Yes. However, you can only swing them. And when that happens. But there is. <laughs> he is a solid. In truth. Set up a safety save before the next boss fight. Tell your father you wish to break the Iron Code and stay loyal to Kuro. Father, to think you... That was my desire. But the same could be said. The power of the divine... That's it. What? The, the dragons... Father... Now you see. Remember the... From this moment... For sake... Listen to me. Obey your... I cannot do as you ask. You... Unthinkable. Uh. We can lock our father in between the door and the statue just like we did with Genichiro, but this time we need to use the left side. The setup is exactly the same. You can try and swap places with him during his first few attacks by standing near the door, or use firecrackers to slowly move him into position. The goal is to attack the area behind the door so you're not swinging at him directly. The parent is absolute. Their will must be obeyed. Attacking twice, followed by a pause, will usually keep him locked into place, but your timing has to be perfect or it's possible for him to escape. If you find this rhythm difficult to maintain, just spam R1. There's still a chance he might escape, but you'll do a lot of damage either way. Don't worry, I have another strategy coming up just in case this doesn't work for you. Wait! Wait! You fool! Strategy number two, lock onto your father, run to the right, and force him to attack. If he throws the ninja stars, you can block or tank the damage, but you can also avoid them if you're quick enough. The problem is the sword attack, which usually follows the ninja stars. You need to block, jump, or avoid this attack because it deals a lot of damage. Ideally, you want him to use this attack when you run past him. This gives you the safest opportunity to counter with a quick or charged R1. Just be very careful using the charged R1 because if he turns around while you're attacking, he will counter your charged R1 with his strongest attack. If you're confident with the fight, then use Mortal Draw instead of the charged R1 for extra damage. Just be careful because using Mortal Draw leaves you open to counter attacks, so you'll need to figure out which strategy works best for you. When 
phase two starts, he'll lead with smoke, which causes you to lose your lock on. Please, you fool. Avoid the small projectile because you won't be able to heal for a short time if he hits you with it. Keep the same strategy from before. Lock on, run past him on the right, and counter his attacks. Again, it doesn't matter if you decide to use running R1s or mortal draw. Go downstairs, rest at the idle, and raise your attack power to 9. My name is Exonovant, and I'll see you in Episode 8. Be good.